When I sat down to record today's video, I was actually looking at some uh, supercharged breaker stuff, but once I started just seeing what everything else was doing, I peeked in on some 151, another 151 video, because things are starting to get a little crazy with singles on 151. A while ago, we talked about like what would happen if the Charizard broke like the 130 range. Well, we're in the 140s. There are TCG players saying market price at 147. But check out some of these recent sales on the Charizard. Last sold, 169. We have a 140, but two in the 160s. 162, 161, 159, 150. That is wild. That is absolutely wild that the Charizard is doing that. Um, on the charts here, we're seeing 18.6% in the past three months alone. At the beginning of the this three-month chart, it was 119. It dipped down as low as 109. So these are some big gains that we're seeing. Um, in the past month, almost 17%. And we'll zoom out to the one year and see what was going on here. So 27% over the past year, and that was because back here was at 115. Looks like this guy went as low as, it almost went sub 100. I'm sure there was, there, you can see there, there was some sales that did go sub 100, but like the average price was 102. That's pretty wild. And we are at a one year high. The previous one year high was 134. So we cracked that and we're in the one, it's going, I, I don't know where this is going to go. High, high sale price, 169.99. So uh, the market, 151 is a unique beast. Uh, it's not, you know, not hard to see that. And this is the big chase card from the set, obviously. So where can this go? I, honestly, I, I, I don't know for certain. I don't think it's going to go ter too much terribly higher. It, it really shouldn't. But, I mean, I guess there's a world in which it does. I mean, if if it cracks into the 170 range, I mean, I don't know. The 180s and 200, it's not that far away, really. I mean, there'd be some big gains, but I don't really see that happening. I think that this is going to be a run-up, and then we're going to see a fall down. With 151, we don't know for sure, so... Uh, if you're looking to pick up this card, my opinion would be to probably wait. I wouldn't, with with how many sales we've seen at the lower prices, I would just wait, personally. But this is really showing that 151 needs some some more singles out there. It's kind of wild. We did touch on this Blastoise in one of the recent videos. It's not as crazy, but on the three-month chart, 22% is super solid. It was down, uh, 43 was the low on the three month, and when as high as 56, it's down a little bit off of that 56. However, most recent sale, 58. So it's a little bit bouncing all over the place, so I don't know where this card's gonna end up either, but it's just interesting. It's really fascinating. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't have been a surprise that, it's not a surprise that the set was is like doing as good as it is, but just some of these swings on these cards. Um, but it's kind of almost flat, ish on the one year so it's not like the charizard where it's like breaking into new territory because back here it was 52 and then you know it hit its 53 and came off so i don't i don't know if the Charizard's going to kind of follow that hit its thing and then come down a little it, it's too hard to tell at this point but uh the blastoise it's nice to see that in the 50 dollars range for sure uh it's a stunning card yeah seeing it in the 40s um your cheapest point you could have had it almost sub 40 i mean well lowest lowest sale in there was 35 but your average so you're looking at 40 bucks in the last year uh so yeah decent little gains there then we have the the venusaur up 50 uh not 50 percent it's at 50 dollars 26 percent uh this is the one month chart 26 percent in the past month alone it was down to 39 dollars up into 50s but last sold check this out guys 55 59 and then there's 49s if this card cracks into the 60s, that's wild. So, um, yeah, the Venusaur, some of these sales, like, I don't know. It, it's impossible to know, like, what's buyouts, what's just the market, but 12% on the past three months. In si it's only 16% over the past year. While that's nothing, you know, to sneeze at, it was as low as 35. So we are, once again, at a one-year high on the Venusaur. 
So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Keep an eye on this guy where, where it can end up. Uh, it's yeah. I, this is weird. High sale of 99. We're going to ignore that. That's obviously an anomaly, but, um, yeah, 11 sold per day. That's interesting. Let's, I'm going to go back to the Charizard just for a second. 10, 10 Charizard sold per day is the average. Blastoise is at 11 and Venusaur is at 11. That's interesting. So the Charizard is moving just as much as some of the lesser cards being a lot more expensive. Then we have the Zapdos, which is probably my favorite card from the set. If I'm, yeah, it's my favorite card. I, I love the artwork. Not as, it's not really doing the same things. We're seeing uh 7.5% in the past month. Uh, it was at 43. Now it's down into the lower 40s. 6% on the three month chart. It's just doing a little up and down, up and down movement. Then on the past year, you know, it's relatively flat, kind of overall just up a few percent. High of 43. And yeah, so last solds on this guy. Looks like it's coming back down. I mean, we did see a 44 here, but it's coming down into the high 30s. Which, you know, I guess that's it's kind of what some of these cards have been doing, except when they get attention, right? So, yeah, like, the starter's getting some attention right now. And the Squirtle. Check this bad boy out. 27% gain in the past three months alone. And it was, it went as low as 25. It was at 27 and 35. But last solds, I mean, that seems accurate. 35, 36, 35, 35. But this is interesting. There's a $64 sale. I don't know what that was about. I'm going to say that that was just an outlier anomaly, but big gains there. 24% in the last month alone, which is kind of wild. We'll zoom out to the one year. One year high. 62% gain on the Squirtle. It's crazy. Could have picked it up for, it looks like 22 was the one year low. 22 up, in, yeah, that's, those are some great gains for the Squirtle. Adorable, adorable card, by the way. Um, yeah, that's... 151 doing his thing even the charmander look at the charmander 28 percent the past three months alone we have uh the one month chart yeah it's up four percent which is pretty good i mean this guy cracked 40 dollars for a while as we went to the one year not as big of gains um over here because we were in like the 30 range already for the charmander but it hit its high, its high was around 37 right here and last solds we're seeing 36, 36, 38. So that seems about right uh, for this card. So, yeah, it's just wild to follow how these cards have just had some such big swings from uh, times. Then we have the Bulbasaur, sleeping little Bulby. 19% up in the past three months, was down around 23. And most of that coming in the last month, 20% around, just under 20%. And that's pretty much what we see on the one year. However, on the Bulbasaur right here, Cracked thirty dollars, which was the one year high. So that's what I was talking about in some of the other vi other videos. Like sometimes when a card cracks a certain price point, whether it's buyouts or FOMO, like they can just kind of run. It's kind of like stocks. If you like know anything about stocks, once sometimes once they crack through a certain price point, they just like take off. It's not usually the case for Pokemon cards. They don't just take off like crazy. There's always exceptions, but I just wanted to see like. Once these cracked these certain points, what was going to happen? And it seems like once they did, they they they've been retracing a little, which you know makes sense. It, Thirty dollars for the Bulbasaur seems high for some of these cards, but everyone wants to master set it. So I mean, it, it makes sense. It's going to be the most master setted set probably ever. Um, so it, it checks out. Then we have the Charmeleon here, which. It's around 25 bucks right now. It's up 18% in the past three months uh, and almost 8% in the past month alone. Take a look back. So this is, it doesn't look like this is at the one-year high. It's about kind of at its one-year high. It's dipped, it's hit this a few times and it just hasn't been able to keep going through that. But last solds, that, that's wild. Okay, so see, this is where it's interesting. And TCG player isn't always... It's not the best gauge of the market per se, but I, it probably is. It's one of the best. I, I say that just because there's so many. There's like eBay. I, I like to go off eBay a lot, but a lot of the times at all the shows, most of what I was seeing for, you know, not crazy high dollar cards, 
is TCG player comps. So that's why we use it. It's so many people go by it. So I, when you're, when you're pricing out your cards, I would try and use both if you want like the most accurate because they can vary, but this is what's wild right here. $40 for the Charmeleon, $40 sale. That was the last sold. And, and then it went down 25, 23, but then when there was a 38 and a 38 down here. So yeah, th those are probably anomalies. And we're seeing at some point somebody paid $52 for one. So yeah, that's, that's probably the outlier, but it's very interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know where these are going to go. We really don't. And then check out this big spike on the Ivysaur. 30% in the past three months alone. That's, I mean, and right here, it just went from 19 up to 25, like real quick. So that, yeah, that's kind of wild. 10% in the past month alone. Then we zoom out and another one year high. So this is what I'm talking about. It's just interesting to see as low as 15 and now we're up to 25. So those are, those are some pretty good gains for that card. And last sold, it's a little all over the all over the place again, but we're seeing like a fifty dollar sale, forty nine, and then a seventeen and twenty four. So, like, I think these are going to come down. Uh, I wouldn't, if you guys are looking to pick up these, like, don't, don't be fomoing into these prices. Like, I'm not doing that. I, I wouldn't do it if I was you. And when you have to, I know we've talked about so the reprint. We're going to talk about, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, the reprint restock. I'll get to that at the very end of the video, but uh, let's just get through a few more cards before we talk about that. Then we have the Dragonair, which I think is an absolutely stunning card. I think somebody in the comments said that they thought that the the Dragonair looked like it was dead, just like floating in the water. Um, I thought that was funny. Uh, that was a while ago, but uh, I hadn't looked at that card from that perspective. I thought it was just swimming. But check out this run on this Dragonair up nearly 40% in the past three months and 1633 up to 22% percentage wise. That's pretty huge. And then the last month alone, 38% on the dragon air. Let's go. I, I thought, thought this was always a cool card. Wish the dragon Knight had gotten the IR personally. There was a lot of cards that kind of got shafted in 151, but they couldn't all get their dues. So, I mean, I guess I understand, but 51% in the past year. So one year high again, that's, and see it, they all peaked off and then they're kind of either leveling off or coming down. So we'll see where it ends up, but that's, that's some pretty good gains for one year. So, I mean, it's one, 151 at this point. It doesn't really surprise me, but, uh, the Pikachu, this one had a big, I pulled this one up because it had a, like a big run up here and then it came back down. It's just an interesting spike, but despite that, it's still up 10% in the past three months. And then it's kind of leveling off a little 1% on the three month chart. If we zoom out to the one year though, it looks like 22, 23. So this was the one year high back here, that spike. So yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's climbing off of that a little. There's a few high sales. I mean, we're seeing a 27, but yeah, this card, it's kind of just around that 20, 20 ish dollar range. So that one seems to be a little bit more normal. Then we have the war total, uh, 14% past three months and almost six percent in the past month alone now this one's a little this one's a little different too as we look at the one year it's practically even it's at that it was 20 over here and it's 20 here had its high of 23 and it's low of 16. so 23 to 16 is a pretty big swing but it's just interesting to see what cards are doing what and like with the like the squirtle the charmander like the other ones that had like bigger runs i'm surprised the war total like didn't kind of follow some of those, but then we have the Poliwhirl. It's on a little bit of a little bit of a run here, twenty-one percent in the past three months and twelve percent in the past month. But we got to look at the one year uh, just to see like how it's really doing overall, because like a three-month swing, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. We want to see what it's doing long term. So uh, a year ago it was eleven dollars, and it hit a low of nine dollars and thirty cents, and had to run up here to 12 and then 12 again but now we're at a one-year high 13 dollars but check this out 27 dollars that was the last sold but then it's kind of down so these are japanese uh 12 10 10 so this card looks like it's coming down uh, but we'll see we'll see what happens okay um sold per day 14 um 
highest price forty nine dollars. That's wild. Uh, don't don't do that, guys. Don't be paying those prices. Um, so yeah, that's those are just most of the cards that are like moving. I kind of wanted to just touch on on the major ones. Um, I'm gonna jump back to the Charizard just for a second, just to look at this because I still think that that's wild. But I mean, when you look at like what some of the other cards are doing, it, it's not like one fifty one can't have an expensive card. It's just it's just surprising though. So yeah, the Charizard's doing good things. Um, I wanted to jump over to the booster bundles for a second because if you have been following the channel or you're in the Discord or whatever, or you've just been, you know, seeing the deals pop up, there's been so many booster bundles that have been restocked. Um, we'll talk about that, what that means. But I thought these prices would have tanked into like the $30 range, but they never really did. It was as high as almost 50 and then it went and it cracked 50 and then it's back down and it's on a little bit of an upturn. Uh, last solds, 42, 46, 46, so about 46, which is kind of wild. Um, in the past month alone, it's up another 4%. We'll zoom out to the one year here. So you can, like, so many flooded the market. And I just thought, I thought these would have tanked more. It's, it's just a little, it's a little mind-blowing. But I guess... Maybe it just goes to prove that a lot of people that are were getting these restocks, they're most likely either ripping the product. I know a lot of people in the Discord uh, were ripping. I mean, I ripped some booster bundles when I got mine, so that makes sense. Um, or they're they're in for the long term, right? They are keeping them sealed. Oh, I think my light is not on all the way. There we go. That's a little bit better. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so... We'll talk again about reprint restock thing. No matter what you want to call it, uh, with 151, uh, with what were all these booster bundles doing? What, how are all these showing up in retail stores? How are um, ETBs still being found? It it could be it could be a reprint. It could be a restock. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter because, and I say that because. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my point. I'm forming my thought on this. But where I'm going with that is when I look at this set, and especially I've said this before, but referring to what it did with they did with the Japanese side, their 151 is ripe for a very large reprint, considering it, if it was a reprint or a restock, whatever you want to think it was, we don't we don't know for for certain. Uh, but I do think it was be I do think it would be weird that they sat on that much stock for that long. That's just my opinion, though. So, um, but it is ripe for a reprint because the booster bundles. You should be able to buy booster bundles for a more affordable price. You should be able to buy ETBs for a more affordable price um, for a few years after release. Uh, so I just think that um, it's too popular, and it's going to happen or if it hasn't already happened. Like, we, we don't know. If they've already started to reprint, if that was the first, like, these restocks were waves of it, we don't really know. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. I still think that there is more coming because I, I don't think, because it's so collected, I don't think that some of these singles should be so high, and I don't think the sealed product should be quite so high from the collecting standpoint, right? If you're a collector, um, and Pokemon wants collectors, right? Pokemon doesn't really, the company, they don't really want investors, per se. They don't want people just buying and holding sealed product. So, um, I don't think they're going to flood the market quite like Jap the Japanese side, but I do think that something is coming. I, I don't know when. Um, this holiday season would make a lot of sense, but um, with all the sets that they're printing, uh, they got to find time to run it, so I don't know when that's happening, but I, I still do believe that it will come. Uh, just I think the prices are just a little too inflated. So, um, yeah, that's that's about it for this one. Um, I don't know when. I'm going to do, like, a few more Japan videos. I finally just got back from... I had to travel again. So I'm trying to get back used to my time zone. Um, so that's... I'm working on that. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're 
19 minutes, almost 20 minutes into the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content, so do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button. I do daily Pokemon collecting and investing content. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this one. I will catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.